you end up thinking ethically about films and about music and even about people sometimes. Because, I mean, you owe it to everyone reading to not just say, I like that. I mean, you really, even if you do really like it, do have a great initial reaction to something, you've really got to think about why, which is the thing you've got to learn. You, you must be tempted sometimes to perhaps champion a cause that's... Uh that, that you're, you know, something you're particularly fond of, maybe. Mm. I think I've been accused of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that, that's just being honest. I mean, you've got to... If you feel strongly about something, I think you've really got to go with it. And there's, there's, it's the most futile thing you can do is not say what you think in print. Mm. You know, I, I, anything that I've gotten behind, apparently, or has generally been something I really am quite excited about. Mm-hmm. Have you ever made a mistake, and, and how do you cope with that sort of thing? Mm. You make mistakes, I mean, that's inevitable, but uh, factual errors are, uh, are easier, really, because, I mean, you can apologise about that in the next issue, but if you say something in a review that doesn't really come out the way you mean it, uh, that's difficult. I mean, that's why I don't think... You, you never really know how something's going to read until you see it in print in the magazine on paper. I mean, I see my copy all the way through. And I can often get quite neurotic about last-minute changes, which makes it <laughs> difficult for Murray, who has yeah. to lay the thing out. But, yeah. So how far do you think uh, Rip It Up is influenced by the British music press? Not, I don't think music writing or the music in this country is nearly as much influenced by Britain as it used to be. And I think there's several reasons for that. There's just the fact that I think the mu a lot of the music that's developing here has lost the colonial aspect to it. I think it's got its own identity. I mean, I, I can remember, like, with punk, everyone looked towards what was happening in the enemy or mm. what was happening in England. And I don't think that happens nearly so much anymore. I think the, the place has its own identity. And also the British music magazines haven't been really up to scratch, I think, over the last three or four years. The enemy has been a little bit better this year, but I don't think... I think they've been scratching a bit for good music to write about, too. Yeah. Um well, just, just where do you see Rip It Up's place or function, you know? Yeah, well, obviously, as the only nationwide publication that can discuss music in depth, I mean, it's... You've got to be... You've got to think about it. You've got to be pretty responsible, I think, and often temper your criticism. I mean, I'm quite conscious of that, because it's very easy to criticise someone you know, and completely damn them. Mm. But, I mean, it's bloody hard to make a record in this country and I think you've got to always be conscious of that especially when we are the only magazine yeah. that can deal with that sort of thing in depth. Let's take a look now at a couple of uh, clips you requested. Right. What made you choose those two songs and not something a bit more recent? Uh, because I like both of them a lot and uh, I haven't seen them for a while, they haven't been shown for a while so I thought that would be good. The Chris Knox one I think is, is interesting because it it's the first one he made on his own. I think he's a very good filmmaker. I think his clips are world class. Mm. And the clean one I like because it's the clean looking cool. And very cool <laughs> That's in that good video. enough reason. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do you think of the current state of the New Zealand music scene? Well, obviously it, it's reasonably healthy, I think. Um, the overseas recognition isn't the be all and end all, but it's good because it, it does vindicate what's happening here. It's good. It's uh, it's interesting, only two different approaches. I mean, there are people now who are seeing New Zealand music as an investment, and there's nothing wrong in that because the whole thing needs money to go around. Mm. And that's one of the problems at the moment. There isn't any money. And they're, I mean, they're looking more at, at chart success you know, in other countries. I mean, they're looking at having hits. And you've got other bands like, say, The Chills and The Lanes, who are looking at making the best records they can. And it would be nice, you know, I think they'd think it would be nice to um, sell a whole lot. Mm. But um, I, th I think there's going to be things happening on both fronts this year, actually. I think with the Dunedin bands, a lot of them, like bands like Sneaky Feelings, have been around a very long time, and it, it's going to have to happen quite soon for them. I mean, they're mature bands. Yeah. I mean, they've been around five years or so. Do you think the proposed uh, local content radio quota is going to change anything? I certainly hope so, because I've got eight hours of writer's cramped numbering forms this week. So, um... I don't... It's anything that gets New Zealand music, and which is therefore New Zealand culture, onto the broadcast media can't hurt. I think it's going to put more money... If it works, it's going to put more money um, into the industry. And that 
that isn't getting a good thing because that's what's lacking. It, there's a bit of a worry with a repetition of what seems to have happened in Australia, I think, with um, bands making records catering yeah. to radio, catering to the blandness that is top 40 radio, which, yeah. is, which is a worry. I think, in a way, New Zealand bands not having a prayer of getting played on the radio has been quite healthy in a way because, I mean, they've made the records they want to. But I think now is definitely the time for a 20% quota. It's a shame it has to come to anything as heavy-handed as yeah. legislation. Yeah. It's, that's a real shame, but, I mean, if that's the only way it's going to happen, it's the only way it's going to happen. <laughs> hey, well, look, thanks for coming in. It's good talking to you. And good luck in London. Thank you.